Okay, so what do we got today, right? Um, well, what I'm going to do is um, a little bit about uh, sealing the gura, you know, uh, sealing stones in general. And I know I've gone over this before um, in another video, but that was an older one with, uh, I think, a music soundtrack and maybe some uh, text uh, fields like scrolling through and I figured it would be a time, a good time to do a, a new one, a new variation on that theme. Um, just to be a little, uh, to explain a little bit better, to explain a little bit more. Anyway, so I'm going to put my little mascots, my little uh, penguin power trio over there. Right? And, um, you know, basically he's like a simple set of Nagura, you know, and uh, normally I, I won't uh, seal the small ones. If I'm selling, uh, like on Etsy, I'm selling a small set, uh, you know, the 60 to 70 to gram jammies, uh, uh, 60 to 70 gram jams. Um, I, I'll just sell them straight like this and, uh, <clears throat> and that'll be that. Um, if I'm going to keep a small set for myself, most of the time, I'm going to hit it with um, nail polish. I actually, I use this stuff. It's a Sally Hansen product. It's a nail hardener or something like that. And it's cheap. You know, I get a, this bottle for like $2 or something like that on sale at a big box uh, drugstore. And I'll just smear it over the top uh, of the stamps just so uh, they don't, you know, disappear on me. Because if I ever go to sell them, people want the stamps and so on and so forth. Plus, they're, they're cool and I like looking at them, you know. So, I'll move them out of the way for the time being. You know, and uh, contrary to what I just said, he is a little one. <laughs> he is about 72 grams. And um, it's a nice bow tan. And, uh, and I did seal it. I, I sealed this one because it was really special to me. Um, a little bit of history behind it, but uh, it's just one of those bow tens that uh, I can grab. It's just usually laying around on my bench somewhere and you know eventually I'll I'll piff it or put it in a kit or something like that but for a long while it's been kicking around. I have a tenju uh, around somewhere. I don't know where it is at the moment um, that could use uh, some sealing actually and um, to match this one because it's out uh, around all the time too and it's a smaller stone and you know um so that's that, right? And now here's a bigger one. You know, we're up into the, you know, I don't know, 140, 150 grams. And uh, it's my uh, numbering scheme on the bottom there. If I was going to go and use this, I'd just lap that off and then put the number back on later. It just helps me keep track of things. Um, most of the stones here have some kind of scribbling on them like that. But anyway, all right, so I have this bigger one. And, you know, plus I stamped this one. I got my uh, Tomo Nagura. Um, script uh, stamp on there and sealed so you know uh people say you know hey well so what do you use i use cashew lacquer uh for these uh yurushi um sometimes but rarely usually it's just cashew lacquer um people are always asking me you know hey can you sell me some or can you do my stones for me and like i can't do that because i only get a little bit when i buy stones sometimes i'll get like i'll get like this much you know in a bottle shoved into a box of stones and i gotta make it last you know um uh, yeah i could order it and pay for it but it's expensive and you know it's a pain in the butt and uh you know to, to be dealing you know with something that I, I i don't do a lot of i do some of it but you know um that to stop buying cans of it it's just it doesn't keep well i've had cans someone a couple of people sent me cans years ago and Get about halfway through and then it starts getting weird and then like every time you want to use it you got to strain it or you should strain it anyway but like you're straining it and chunks are coming out and it just can't be good you know so uh anyway um why why do we why do we do this it's a rock it should be fine right well you know <clears throat> they're porous and they they'll take on water now um so we seal them, right, to protect the stamps so they don't get worn off, right? But we also, um, you know, we seal the sides, you know, so excess water doesn't start, you know, entering in through the sides also, you know. And at the same time, you get like a nice grippy feeling, you know, that, that carries through to like when it's wet. And that may seem like trite and unimportant, but, you know, the user experience, you know, 
when you're honing with these things, these these JNATs and these Nagura, there's there's history, you know, there's culture, you know, there's art and craft and and science and you know, there's like, you know, you can go back to like the 60s where there was sake and getting all the stamps made with the people over at the, the quarry and, you know, the selecting of that one location, like this is where all the good Nagura come from and, you know, and go way back, way, way, way back in time to like, I don't know, sometime, I think after 1100 AD, after uh, Hanyama uh, mines were um, named and taken over by the, well, to just call it government to keep it simple, um, you know, uh, and then the polishing techniques that developed after those stones became popular and you know, there's a lot of, there's heritage, there's history, there's all kinds of stuff. So, you know, we want to keep the stones around. Oh, but yeah, they're limited in supply too, because the quarry that these come from, they're, they're basically out of business. They're cutting from old stock stone that was taken out, the hole in the ground where the stones are extricated from. They're closed. I don't see them reopening that. All right, so um, you have that to deal with also. So you want to keep your stuff around as long as possible. So you have the sealing of the stamps. You have the, you know, <clears throat> the, the grippiness feeling. And, um, you know, then you want to limit the water ingress into into the stone because over time it'll just wear away the stone. You, you've seen it happen in the street. Like cement will wear away just from rain and whatever. You know, so... Um, you know, we seal them to protect them, keep them nice, and uh, feel good about using them, and give a, a little bump to the tactile experience when uh, using them. Anyway, so that's that. You know, and we do it with the stones, too. We do it with the full-blown stones. You know, here's like a Karasu. Um, you can see the side and the bottom is done, right? And like, but when I do these, right, um, basically I just, you know, I'll, I'll hold it here like this, and then do the edges, and then... I take it and I'll prop it up on something like that and I'll just let it, you know, cure. Yeah, it's a old bakery weight. And, um, you know, I'll come back in a day or so and put another coat on. This one has, I don't know, about four coats on it, you know. And uh, these probably have four or five. Um, when, I, when I do Nagura, I start off with a very, 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 very thin coat usually. I let it soak into the surface because um, we're not looking to just put a layer on top. We want it to go into the stone, down like more than a couple of microns, and and then it all polymerizes and it um, becomes like a hard shell that actually it's it's in the stone. You know, it, it, the finish is actually now part of the nagur. You know, and if I was to take this and do do a cross section and come in with a microscope on the cut, you'd see that this actually penetrates in, you know? So anyway, so that's the deal with that. Um, but people ask, you know, uh, how do you do it? And you know, this is all, it doesn't matter how you do it really. Um, but what I do, you know, is, uh, parallels, uh, like what goes on in the world of, uh, you know, gem cutting and polishing and min mineralogists and what have you, the people that do like, uh, cutting cabochons and, uh, faceting stones, you know, um, uh, they have a thing called a dop stick. So I, I, this is not technically a dop stick, but I use it as a dop stick. Um, I have a couple of them. I'll show you the what, little nest where they live in a sec. All right. So you can see this has a, uh, um, little wad of something on top. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the stone to this and that allows me to um, handle it easier, you know, for uh, applying the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, cashew lacquer, All right? So um, just recently, um, <clears throat> you know, I've been doing this for a while and uh, recently I asked uh, David you could hook me up with a wood block. So um, <laughs> he hooks me up with this awesome, I mean, just like, dude, <laughs> this is, this, it's like, this is 
better wood than most of my furniture is made out of. Uh, thank you, David. Like from the bottom of my heart, this is like I, I just I was blown away. Um, so he made this for me, and you can see I have the dop sticks in there, and, and we'll be getting another angle like this after I get something mounted. But basically, what I'm doing is I'm going to be mounting the stone to it like that, right? And uh, then I use this block uh, if I had a box with holes punched in it because you know that's me um, to do the what have you and uh, this is a lot nicer so David yeah thank you for that and um, David's amazing that's David Welch by the way he's he's like really good with wood he makes boxes for his uh, his stones it's like his hobby I, I'm, I'm I, I don't think he like you know makes them for people but when he makes them for himself they're like they're fucking amazing man Anyway, so anyway, I got this nice um, plop of uh, wax. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, this is right here. This is dop wax, right? This is the green stuff. It comes in colors. Uh, green and brown are, to me, essentially the same. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, the brown melts at a lower temp. I could be wrong about that, but it's been like a million years since I've actually sat down at a lap table and uh, polished anything, so... Um, and this, and then the colors go up. There's like a black one that, uh, faceters love. And, um, that's the, uh, highest temp melting. But anyway, so what I do with this is, um, nothing, you know, really tremendously, uh, these, these knives are great, you know, and, uh, right, you just, I'm making a big mess. I, I got a bunch of, uh, wax dust. Basically is what I got there. So then I take this. And you can see that, right? And fire. And you kind of got to be a little careful when you're doing this because, well, hot wax hurts bad. It'll grab your skin and you'll just, like, you can't get it off you, right, basically. So it's like fire. Might, there might not be flame coming off of it, but whatever it is, it's that hot, okay? And uh, all right, so... Maybe I'll get this to work right on the first shot. I guess I should have a better camera angle than this. Kind of blew that, but I I, I think you got the, the idea what I'm doing here, right? See? So I'm just going to hold that for a sec. It's a really nice stamp. Look at that stone, though. It's got, like, all those, like, spots running through it. You know, over there to the left of the uh, uh, the grade, and that's uh, Tokyo. You know, for the stripes and the color banding running through it and the modeling. But um, those marks that you see there that look like freckles. Let's see if I can get some focus going on. Damn phone. Anyway, um, those spots, that's like carboniferous fossils. It's like plant life that decomposed into the stone, into the layers of uh, the prolith, the mud, basically, that formed this stuff in the Earth's crust, all right? Like plant life that fell in and other things fell around it. So like this one is, um, you know, it's not really telltale, but sometimes you, you, you find them and it looks just like a fern running through it. But uh, anyway, so there we go. See that? All right, so what I'm going to do, right... Put that in the block, and I'll show you. All right. So um, here's, you know, the other one is is like right there. And sorry for the lack of steady cam stuff here. So what I'll do is I'll have all four stones or three stones in the set, right? I'll set up on these little platforms, you know, and then I can work on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the other stones set up, and uh, then I'm going to come right back. So stay tuned. All right, so uh, hey, we're back. 
And um, I thought about something while I was setting up those uh, three Nagura on the dop sticks uh, about the wax. You know, um, you can get this at any like uh, gem shop. Um, well, not maybe not any, but one that does uh, takes care of like anyone who's a lapidary. And um, the reason we use this is uh, this isn't normal wax like you make a candle out of. There's a really high concentration of um, lacquer in here lacquer flakes like you know from those bugs that they get you know lacquer from or was it shellac excuse me yeah it's shellac it's not lacquer what the hell's wrong with me anyway um well i guess it doesn't matter if it's lacquer or shellac the point is it the, the main point is not so much as what's in there is that it's not candle wax right and uh it has a real grippy nature um, so it really holds on to the stone. So, you know, like that stick there, um, I've had it a bazillion years, but I, I think like that would probably cost like two bucks. All right. So I got here is like some turpentine, right? And the turpentine I use, uh, predominantly, uh, is, uh, this stuff by Windsor. People ask me, uh, Keith, why don't you use the, uh, <coughs> the thinner made for cashew lacquer? It's like, you know, I don't think it's important. You know, um, it's also hard to get, and so is the lacquer. So it becomes this thing. It's like you know how much effort and time and you know all that stuff. Uh, balance, got to achieve balance in the course of doing things. All right, so um, here's our stone, right? And uh, you know it's on there securely, but you don't want to whack it. I mean, th this is not a point in time where you start whacking the stone, right? Um, this is just uh, a means with which to hold the stone, you know. So uh, I'm going to put that over here uh, for a sec. Move that over to here. And um, I have some lacquer mixed up. And uh, I'm not going to go through the whole mixing thing. I showed you that in the other video. But uh, what I do want to show you is I, I think you can see, like, how, how thin it is, right? It's very thin. See, it, it's not really sticking to the bottom of the jar here, so it's thin. All right. So I got my brush out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush right out of the thinner, the uh, turpentine. And I'm, I'm going to take off as much of it as possible because right now, all right, this is pretty thin. All right. So move this out of the way. All right. And I'm doing it on a cardboard box that I salvaged from uh, something that got shipped to me. And uh, right, so dipping it in there, right. Now, to be completely honest, this is a little thicker, just a little teensy, teensy, teensy bit thicker than I would normally start off with. So, what I'm gonna do. There we go. I don't know if you could see it. But you see how I got a little bit of runny? For this very first coat, that's not a problem. I'm just going to go over what I had already started, right? I'm going to pick up some of the thicker stuff, right? And. Just got to work with it when it's this thin, and you get a good, good coating. On the stone. And if you do get like drip and run, which when it's thin, it's going to want to do that. But you just kind of chase it down, you know, and brush into it and make sure everything is covered. And you wind up with a very nice coat. Okay, now you see how I'm holding this? Like I'm not getting any goo on my fingers. All right? So, you know, and I'm going to put a little teensy bit more. Thinner into it. Because I really do. I, I want it thin, man. I, I want it thin. I... 
it, it means more coats to get where I want to go. It means more work overall. Now let's see if we can see how over here where it's just kind of like a little splotchy and red that's this is perfect all right this is this is really how i want it now i i know there's like you know a hundred guys out there doing this now and everyone's got their own thing okay i i got my directions from a very old timer okay and yeah it was through like emails and texts and it was like transcribed and it was explained and you know in, in the beginning it started off with like why do you want to do that because most people these days are just using a type of lacquer that's used on instruments uh, the uh, the gentleman in question was sort of curious about um, why this American dude from Brooklyn <clears throat> wanted to uh to know about this and yurishi and everything else that goes on and um finally after conversations uh many conversations he realized that I, i'm i'm dead serious like serious like a heart attack serious on this stuff and uh, he even said in an email he said uh <clears throat> call me mr keith <laughs> he says you are serious about nagura and he said that with admiration. And um, now you see how this one is like basically sort of like a, a very, very pale yellow, almost white. That's because that's how the stone is absorbing the, the paint. The first piece is very yellow and that's all the stone. It's not, you know, um, the second piece uh, was uh, <clears throat> Betsu, Betsu Ju, and uh, the first one was Tokyo, and the Tokyo has the orange in it, and it really starts to come out. Um, the, the the set is still matched, uh, match performance, not color. Color means whatever, but anyway, just want to touch base on that. So anyway, you know, I had some talks with some uh, several, but one, one notable person with the ceiling of the stones and uh, the tradition and everything, and. You know, uh, this is as close as I can get to the way he handled it. And, you know, there, there's no right, there's no wrong. As long as you're meeting the basic premises of, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. Like, what, what are you trying to accomplish? You just want your stuff to look like it's real? Then you can just basically, you know, get some spray paint, tape stuff up. And put it out in the backyard and hit it with, like, I don't know, 10 coats of Krylon or some shit. And uh, then you can go post pictures of that on your favorite shaving form. You know, and you'll look like the man because, like, your stuff will be sealed. But you don't get the history. You don't get the heritage. You don't get the science. You don't get the bonding and the caramelization of the... Um, not caramelization. <laughs> what is wrong with me tonight, man? Um... No, it's curing. It's, you know, um, it's a synthesis when the polymers, it's polymerization is what it is, um, starts doing its thing. You know, um, you create this, this bond and this shell and this protective layer. And, you know, people have been doing it for a really, really, really long time. And I don't use the traditional Yurushi be most of the time because you can uh, get an allergic uh, reaction to it. But, uh, you know, this is as close as I'm really comfortable with uh, getting because I sell a lot of stuff and I, I don't get a reaction to it myself, but I don't know if someone else is going to. And I would feel terrible if I sold it to someone and he paid, you know, good money for stones and then they gave him a rash. That would suck. Anyway, so here you go. Here, this one would normally be for coma, but I'm only going to do a three piece set, you know, so I guess take that out. Right. So. All right. So there they are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these sit and do their curing thing. And uh, then come back, and I'll show you after the second coat and the third coat, and then when they're all done, and then I'll, I'll pop them off, and I'll show you that part, too. Anyway, so, oh, yeah, <laughs> people ask, you know, what is this, right? If it's not a dop stick and uh, it's working like one, uh, what is it exactly? This is a vintage Briggs and Stratton um, um, valve for a motor, you know, uh, up in the head you have the little holes and up in the head you have icby intake compression power exhaust four stroke whatever two stroke it doesn't matter 
Um, I believe they're, they're, they're exhaust valves. I'm not even sure. I just kind of like picked them up. Uh, American made steel. Um, thought they were kind of cool. Uh, they have the right form factor. And they'll be easy to clean if I get goo all over them. I'll just like soak them and the steel isn't going to be affected. So uh, normally in the world of uh, gems, you would use a wooden dop stick like a dowel. And it's a hardwood. And I thought about doing that. But I don't know. Something about this like sort of like I thought it was cool. And I love cool stuff. So anyway, <laughs> catch you later. Catch you on round two for the second coat. Take care. Anyway, <clears throat> yesterday uh, I started sealing these guys. And... Um, put them over on the side and let them do their thing and <clears throat> you know I'm just gonna show you like what to look for and uh, go over like why we do uh, multiple uh, coats right now the first coat we put on you know I told you it's it's thin so it soaks into the stone right and um, what you have let me see if I can try and catch it in the light I'm looking at it in my, my monitor and, and trying to see what you're seeing. Um, but I'm just trying to catch the glare. And, and you can see that it's not even. The coat's not even at all. All right, so. Even at all. All right, so we had some penetration. You know, you saw me put the uh, cashew lacquer on here. And um, it, it did soak in. So we had that, and but you know one side like here, right? This is pretty continuous and and pretty much like a nice coat, but the other side is not. So, like, what could have caused that? Well, it could have been me put on more here than there, uh, which is doubtful, but it could have happened. Um, the stone on this side might be a little more porous, and that's likely. And. Uh, the porosity that I'm speaking of doesn't necessarily mean that the stone, like the stone, is inconsistent. Although that could always be uh, a situation. Um, this side of the stone could have been finished a little finer, a little smoother, and this could have been a little rougher. And you'll find that uh, remember back like a long time ago, there were these guys that were trying to prove stone hardness by water absorption. Yeah, that was a failed experiment because they just didn't want to understand that if you took two identical stones and you polished one to like, I don't know, 5K with, you know, wet dry and the other one you did to like 140X, the one with 140 is going to absorb water faster. It's just the way it goes. So you could have, uh, we could, I could have um, had that scenario here. And it's really not important. I'm, I'm, I'm just showing, you know, for the sake of showing. Um, and explaining that, you know, this is one of the reasons why uh, we want to do uh, multiple coats. Now I have that. I'll take this one out. This one looks pretty good, you know. Um, <clears throat> and someone might ask, like, you know, well, you know, this one um, sealed up nice. Is that because uh, the um, stripe stones in <laughs> Tokyo are uh, harder and um, the finish sits on top more? And that that's... <laughs> that's actually something out of that same camp of people trying to prove uh, water absorption. You have soft and hard, striped and white. You know, you, there are numbers of things going on here. There's no hard, fast rule. You know, uh, people want to say things like uh, Asahi stones are harder than Kita. Well, maybe the ones you ran into are, so that may be your reality. But in general, you should know that there are really hard Kita stones out there also. Okay, so same thing with Nagura. <clears throat> Not all uh, Betsu are softer than all Tokyo. You know, it's just the way it is. But anyway, this one uh, sealed up uh, pretty nicely, you know. Now, uh, this one, the third one. Well, third, I don't know. It's the uh, Tenju, right? <clears throat> um, again, we have uh, some nice, you know, seal on... A lot of it, and then like here, it gets a little wonky, right? And over here again, it's getting a little wonky, but you can also see these pock marks, right? Over here, all right, I, I, it didn't get in there, you know. And uh, I try to pay attention to those things with the first coat, but sometimes it slips by me, you know. 
And the same thing here, it didn't come, see how it's like all streaky and it's not like, you know, it's not like totally even like this is, right? So, you know, you have here and then you have up here too. Now I'm going to, I'm going to be dropping in some uh, stills and I've already done that with one. Uh, just to like make a point, but up here we have like another pock marker too, and then and then over here you can just barely pick it up. And it's really hard. The, the reason for the, I'm dropping the stills in is because I really can't catch it. But on this flat right here, What I want to do with the second coat, which I'm going to start right now, is I want to get uh, all these problem areas taken care of and another coat on here. And it's sort of like a second base layer, right? Um, it's still going to be thin, but it might be a little thicker than what I started with. I'll judge that as I go along, you know, and then I'll put these over on the side to um, cure overnight, you know. I may do a third session, you know, I'm going to put these over there and, you know, it's uh, it would be a little hard to show everything here. All right. So, um, actually what I want to do is this. All right. So, uh, let me take, anyway, like I was saying, I, I might do a third coat, um, and then only show the fourth. I, I don't know how many times I want to keep going at this um, on camera because I don't want this to be too, too redundant, even though, you know, the process is that there's a lot of redundancy in the process. Um, you know, uh, American Minds, you know, they're always like, oh, well, how can I get, just get it done? You know, that, that goes back to the guys doing the spray painting thing. I didn't make that up, by the way, that that actually there there have been a number of people who've, I think use Krylon on their stones and heck, you know, if, I don't care. It makes them happy. It makes them happy. All right. So, uh, put another coat on here. Again, you can see it's, it's pretty thin, right? So, um, put that into the block and then I'll take this one. Now this one uh, I showed you, I had some trouble areas, right? So I'm going to do a little focus on them. All right, I want to get in there with the brush. I want to, and because it's thin, I can go in, I can make like a little run, and it's not going to cause me a problem, you know. See, and I'm, I'm just literally getting in there, you know, and then I just, just brush over it, man, you know. Look at this one, I'm just going to put a dot of uh cashew right into it yeah and uh, if i'm really worried about it like causing a run and i'm not but you can just tip it over like what i just did and uh yeah i got in there yeah it's all covered now we also have to remember that you know we're not passing a test or becoming certified as uh nagura sealers so if you make a mistake or rather, when I make a mistake, yeah, I, I don't lose my mind over it. You know, I, I'm not. If there's a streak or a drip or whatever. It's, you know, it's like wabi sabi, man. It's just deal. You know, um, it's not about being perfect. It's about achieving your vision, protecting your stone, and getting it into a good place for uh, usability. So, all right. So there's that one. All right. Now I got this one. It's hard for me. My monitor is a mirror, so like everything's reversed. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> I got to remember if I want to go right, I have to move left. So, uh, yeah, so I'm adding on. Now, th this actually is still pretty thin, this, this cashew from yesterday. I haven't added anything to it, but it has thickened up a little bit, which is fine. You know, I still have a good amount of that... <clears throat> thin viscosity that's letting it penetrate and go where it has to go and get in there and uh, be very fluid. 
all right and what happens is is like all your brush strokes like most of them when the coat is thin <clears throat> it'll settle down and the brush strokes will disappear yeah you're gonna pick up a couple and if you're the kind of person with that talent and that mindset you can you know work at achieving a, a you know a finish that's for your brush strokes I, i'm not that person i'm not that good and i'm not that fussy um i think my stuff comes out real nice and i'm good with that you know so um whoops anyway yes one of the liabilities of having open solvents out on your desk it's a little difficult to manage so anyway so here we go all right um put this here and i'll put that there for the sake of the photo and uh yeah there we are all right so that was the uh the second round and you know we're looking hopefully to achieve you know something like this with these guys and we're on our way you know and um you know one or two more coats and uh we'll be good to go all right so stay tuned Talk to you soon. all right well now we're back for round three okay um done uh two coats so far we still have as you can see there along the side it's not really like building up where i like it to be yet so we got to do at least i think two more coats um this one came out nice and if they were all like this i could probably stop now although i would probably do one more coat just because uh, but that's close and then this one also has some areas where it doesn't have full coverage all right got my thinner got my lacquer piece of paper towel I'll just take off excess thinner because at this point not really looking you know to make it thin 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 um we've gotten in you know to the top surface of the stone now we're just building up on it right so do this fast well I have to do it fast I'm just Just want to keep going around the stone. Make sure I hit all the surfaces. And yep, that one's good. Hmm. A little something fall. Don't know what that was. I take my watch off because sometimes the lack of flies. All right, so. Now this is a little thicker now because the lacquer has been exposed to air. Some air got into the container. The thinner is going to evaporate a little bit. You can see like underneath I get some on the stone, but that's okay. It's just going to lap off. Yeah. Okay. That's basically it for round three. Um, I'll put a couple of drops. Of what do you call it? Thinner into the batter there, so it stays nice and fluid. All right, so there we have it. These three, round three, waiting on round four. All right, catch you later. All right, well, <clears throat> we're back for the final portion. And I did one more coat since the last one. 
And now all of uh, these three beautiful Makawanaga are uh, sealed uh, to the same extent as this one. They have now that uh, candy shell type of feel and look to them. And um, that's what I was looking for uh, on top of the initial coats uh, where I got the uh, lacquer to penetrate in and form a bond with the stone to um, add strength, you know, and um, also aid with, uh, you know, protecting against uh, water ingress and uh, holding on to uh, the stone when you're using it, which is uh, always important, you know. So um, now that I've achieved that, all right, uh, they have to um, cure, all right. The uh, you know I can touch them now. The the finish, the cashew lacquer, uh, is um, hard to the touch. It's not tacky anymore. But um, full polymerization of this finish doesn't occur um, until like a, a a week is passed. You know. So that's fine, you know, I'll take them off the dop stick, so maybe I'll leave them on, I don't know. And um, just let them sit and uh, let that cure so everything is uh, hunky-dory. And, um, all right, you know, on this one, you know, I'm going to drop a couple of stills in, but you can see, you know, that the areas that were a little wonky, like over here, you know, over here all filled in, these, these pock marks are all filled in. Filled in, you know. Uh, this one has a really interesting look. It's almost like candy in a way, you know. That this one had almost like no surface flaws really. Um, this one also didn't have any pock marks, you know. And that's uh, just one of those things sometimes let me see i have that one out here i have this crazy uh, tenju it's got like a, a like a v cut in the top I, I don't know where it is the moment it's around uh, i'm gonna have to seal that one anyway uh, but this one had you know obviously you see the pock marks and everything so that was like a you know a concern all right so um gonna let these sit on the dop sticks or you know i can take them off see that's all just comes right off now this um mark right here is going to have to get lapped off that's some wax so when i go to do this again uh i might add some more wax to it and um maybe i'll chip this off and, and clean it up a little bit you know let me take a look here yeah it's a little carbonized but it's not bad um Occasionally, you have to clean up your dop sticks. That's just the way it is. So I just wanted to show you that. It's like no big deal to uh, take them off. And um, sometimes, like, they're, they're on, like, they're just on, and they don't seem to want to come off. So what I'll do is I have this little tiny ball peen, and I'll just strike right here. And usually, like, a couple of little hits, and that will let go. But, um, yeah, with green and brown wax, usually you don't have too much of it problem usually pops right off every now and then you'll pull up a little tiny piece of stone and it's like you know no big deal man you just you know i'm gonna lap this down anyway i'm gonna put a nice bevel and maybe a little bit of a curve to the surface and you know um that's that anyway so that's the deal with those things um <laughs> you know um hope i didn't bore too many people it's like kind of long but it's one of those things i just wanted to show like some of the intricate parts you know and uh, like like here's a uh, while I'm doing uh, these Nagura, I'm, I'm also doing some Tomos, but I, I'm doing these on camera because I wanted to focus on these. But then I realized like you know, hey, I, I maybe I should show some of this. Well, it it's doing this is the same as doing this for the most part. Um, the one thing I do want to point out though is that you know when you you're working on these, see like right in here, this area and. Also, here, you know, no, especially, you know, like, you know, like in through here and th these corners, right? They all have these, like, you know, little striations, you know? 
And what happens is, is uh, sometimes even when you have a really thin coat and you put them on, when you, you put the uh, cashew lacquer on, you, you get like an air bubble or something in there and it doesn't completely get in. So like what I like to do is when I have stone like this that isn't as rounded as one of these are, as uh, angular and it has like these, uh, you know, unusual marks on the edges, uh, I'll get in here with my loop, you know, and I'll just get a magnified visual on those surfaces to make sure that I've penetrated. Because what can happen is if you get an air bubble, <laughs> you're painting over it, you're painting over it, you're hitting it with lacquer, and like somehow that air bubble never goes away, it never fills. You just wind up making like a little volcano around it or something, and uh, then you have this like pathway for water to get in and it's like not the end of the world if that happens and if you know if you you wind up like you know two months down the road and you find one of those holes it's like don't freak out just go get some nail polish and put a dot in there and, and you'll be okay but um yeah so i'm working on these i'm doing the same thing uh that i do with these except i'm not putting them on dop sticks i just got them sitting up on top of uh these wood boxes excuse me cardboard boxes so i i, I just do that you know and um yeah these are really nice this is like look at that this is like this weird key to namazo and this one is like this really 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 nice okuro sweeter uh, this is a nice size piece uh got a little bit more work before uh i start thinking about moving that one out the door but uh anyway so that's it you know that's uh all i got about sealing the girl at this point in time you know uh, i'm gonna put couple of these guys out here so we sign off like <clears throat> we know what we're doing anyway so if uh if you have any tips or hints or uh if you have any questions or whatever uh about doing any of this you know put them in the comments you know and i uh, always try to remember you know that like when, when you're doing this stuff just have fun you know go slow um if you don't have cashew lacquer that's fine get yourself some nail, po nail polish this stuff works great you know um, in fact, I'm going to do a video, I think, on using the nail polish because it's basically the same, but I can do it really fast because that stuff dries in like no minutes and I don't need to like go crazy. And I just want to touch base on it because there is a little bit of a technique thing to that too. But anyway, if you're doing this stuff, remember it's all about having fun, you know, and uh, paying homage to, um, you know, the way things were done in the past. So, you know, take your time and, and enjoy it, you know, and uh, anyway, have fun. Till next time. Take care.